Another blood red sunset and yet another moon face and still another hundred miles to my next resting place. Driving down the road, eyes on the horizon. Within my car, I'm all alone. But feeling good and feeling strong, knowing that this path I'm on brings me to myself. I'm driving. Hey now all, I'm Joey C. Welcome back to another episode of Spirit Sherpa. This is the show that helps and encourages you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. With me, as always, is the spirit doctor, Kelly Sparta. Hey, Kelly. Hey, Joey. What's going on? I bet you know. I do for two reasons. (laughs) One, because I can see the screen. And two, because your (laughs) voice just broke the window behind me. Kathy's here. Hey, Kathy. (laughs) Hello, hello, hello. (laughs) Hello. <laughs> oh boy, I've got the two of you who are in moods today. This is going to be a fun one. This is going to be a fun one. So, what's going on, ladies? What's happening? Well, um, I was actually interviewed on Be Unique uh, on on Unscripted by Be Unique. So, if you're looking for something more than what you're getting on the podcast, you could go out and check that out. Uh, if you want a direct link to it, well, hop on the mailing list at kellysparta.com because at the end of every month, I put out all of the social media things, all of the interviews I've done, everything that's happened for the month in case you missed it in the course of your your month. So, but yeah, I did a did a fun interview with them about variety of different things, so that was fun. The refi on the house finished. Yay! Oh my god, I'm so done. I didn't kill anyone. It was very close. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have come help cleaned up the blood. <laughs> Kathy's Hashtag giving us friendship. a preamble. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy's giving a preamble to what we're about to talk about. <laughs> so buckle up. <laughs> we're, oh we're talking boy. about Kali today. Okay. Yeah. So who is Kali? Well, Kali is a Hindu goddess. If you ask someone in the Hindu religion, they're going to have a very different perspective than people who work with Kali outside of the Hindu religion. There are a lot of different pieces and parts to Kali. There, the, there's a practice of the, the thousand faces of Kali. But we are going to work with Kali the Destroyer today. <laughs> Help you clean up the blood. Yes, that's what she was saying. And she, <laughs> what she meant was she was going to lick it up. Yes. <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna just let you guys go with that one. <laughs> I, have, I have nothing. Uh, anyway, continue, please. Tell us more. Well, Kali is typically depicted she's she's the multi armed goddess, and so you can see her either in her four armed or her ten armed version, right? Uh, and she's typically depicted with, you know, blood running down her face, skulls around her waist, and, you know, you know, sometimes with a, a skull in her hand of a decapitated person, you know, she's it's just... A, it's a decapitated demon. She, 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 deca- see, I mean, she's bad enough she decapitated a demon and the stuff around her waist are ripped off arms. That's her belt. Around her neck is the bloody skulls. I should have had, I was looking at her going, I knew I should have had Kathy talk about this. I'm just <laughs> talking off of memory here. So yes, yep. I knew there were skulls. So yes, there's, there are skulls. There are, rip, there is her, her, her waist belt. She's naked except for her belt. And her belt is all these bloody arms that have been ripped off. She has knives. She has blood on her tongue. She has blood on her hands. She has her foot on Shiva, who she has supposedly her husband in this tradition. It's kind of like, Eh, I am badass. I'm death. <laughs> I, that's exactly right. I death. Am, I am death. Lo, I am death. And I have come. And uh, yeah, she's the, the ultimate dominatrix in that moment. But yeah. So it, it, Kali is, is and, and this is one of the things, right? Is that Kali's destruction is 
part of a creative process as well, right? So, um, but we've talked about this in the past, right? You know, my destruction brings creation is one of the lines in a song by a uh, one of the better known pagan uh, singers, Kellyanna. She did a song called Kali Ma and. And uh, one of the lines is, my destruction brings creation, Kalima. And it's like, "Hmm, yes, it does. But it's not the reason for the destruction. Okay. It is is a function of the destruction that, that, that space is created. But the destruction is for the joy of the destruction. The rage has a, of an outlet. The destruction is beautiful in its dark waste, right? And so for those of you who are new to the podcast, let me just mention that this is an advanced topic. (laughs) And so before you freak out and go running away, (laughs) let me mention that you might want to start at the beginning of the podcast because we're, we're, Three and a half years in, or almost three years in, I don't even know. Um, and and we're, we're, we're doing some more advanced topics. So you may want to start at the beginning if you're starting to go, oh, shit, I might be in the wrong place. You're not. It'll be okay. All right? So back to Kali. She is about stepping into your darkness, right, and embracing it. Not trying to fix it, not trying to make it go away, not trying to make it better, but just embracing the darkness within because within the darkness is you. I mean, you are light and darkness. We are the balance of duality. And if you cannot appreciate and accept your darkness, you have no chance of finding evolution because your shadows live in the darkness and they will come bite your ass and drag you down. That's what Kali is about. We're going to, so I I have to tell a story. When I had my spiritual shop 20 plus years ago, 1999, right? We had this wonderful artisan. His name was Martin Bridge. And he made these amazing masks that were infused with the different energies of the, the, the entities that he was, he was representing. And we had a Kali mask, that lived on our wall that we were selling for him. And this woman came in and was like, oh, I must have this. I don't have all the money right now. Can I do a layaway? We're like, absolutely, you can do a layaway. And she put her money down and walked out. And we looked at each other and went, this is going to be interesting because she just invited the destroyer into her life, right? And so every month, late, (laughs) we would get a check along with a letter about all the horrible things that had happened (laughs) or all the, all the disruptive, not horrible, but the disruptive things that have happened that caused her payment to be late. And after the third month, and she was laying away on like six or eight months. I don't remember. Um, After the third month, I, I wrote back to her and I said, okay, so when you put this on layaway, we didn't expect it to ever be an on-time payment (laughs) because you were inviting this energy into your life and it was going to upend things. And so we knew that you would pay when you had the money and we would just hold it on our wall until you were done. (laughs) And we were okay with that. And she's like, oh, thank God, (laughs) right? Because, you know, because it was just, it was one thing after another. And that's just the nature of the beast when you're working with Kali. So I'm going to let Kathy talk for a little bit about Kali and what you can do with Kali um, in terms of uh, if you want to step into a practice with her. And by the way, you know, working with Kali or Hecate or uh, the Morrigan or Bridget, any of these people, you really got to be prepared before you walk in because they're dark goddesses and you know they will take you where they want to take you not where you want to go and so you have to be prepared to go on the ride so it's definitely one of those buckle up buttercup moments so kathy do you want to talk a little bit about that I'm just laughing at the buttercup image. <laughs> it's kind of like Kali buttercup yum. <laughs> the uh, 
Kelly, um, in my experience of her as a Westerner, and again, I think it was very important what you said is we're not um, interacting with her through the traditional Hindu structure. I'm I'm not Hindu. I don't know that, but the her goddess energy to me is is um, is ferocious and wild and powerful, and um, it isn't. Uh, I, I mean, yes, she is. She killed a demon. I mean, she, she's an intensely powerful feminine figure. And when I was looking at some of the stuff about her earlier today, the image of her with her foot on Shiva was actually um, uh, held back, covered up by the patriarchy because it was such a disturbing image to see a woman with the head of a demon having, you know, acted in a powerful, ferocious, wild kind of way. And, and her husband underneath her feet was like, Oh no, you know, we don't, we don't want to encourage that kind of energy. You know, we want the nice, soft, demure, calm, you know, loving, mothering, female, subservient kind of energy of which Kali is absolutely the antithesis of. It's like, Oh no. You know, if you choose to work with Kali, um, be aware of the fact that that and and you have been in that uh, sort of, you know, kind of held down, you know, oh, I have to meet the stereotype of what it is to be a nice, gentle, kind, mothering, loving woman. Kali has no time or patience for that. So when you work with her, you're going to, it's just like the woman you told in the story. It's like, well, she, in a wise way, at some unconscious way, that woman knew that she couldn't just buy the mask and take it home. Right. That she had to put it on layaway, that she had to step into the work with Kali with each payment. Gradually. Exactly. Yeah. And allow that energy to come through in its own ways, because to jump into it all at once would have been, um, again, we said this was advanced work that would have been seriously painful. And it would take a very strong vessel and some really strong work, not only energetically, but possibly with a therapist <laughs> to get you out of that one again. But Kali has... In her darkness, in her ferociousness, in her um, ability to live in the darkness in such a powerful way, um, she brings to to women and to men that I know that work with her um, this just incredible. Not only it's not just balance because we always talk about light and dark as in balance, and the thing is, is if if darkness and I don't mean darkness by evil, I mean darkness by that absence that absence of light, the absence of light exactly, is that if you don't have both, you aren't whole, right? You know, to the extent that you are denying that piece, um, you aren't whole. Um, I think. Uh, tell a short story about me, but it's um, many, many years ago, I was in a position where I was overpowered and couldn't do anything about it. And up to that point, it was kind of like I knew, you know, I had some anger issues, I knew some other stuff. But into that point, I stepped into a place of, of dark rage and power, where I knew in that moment, that they better not let me up because I'd kill them. Okay. That this, that the demon energy, you know, very, I'd had their head right then and there. And it was a, tr not that the experience was wonderful. It was not, but it was a tremendous gift in hindsight to access that part within me, to know that that resided within me, that I had access to that level of action and ability. And it also gave me the capacity to be mindful of it. Because if you have that living within you and you're trying to deny it, it can jump out and hurt people you love. It can hurt you. It can, because you, you're in denial of it and, and it's there anyway. So it's going to act out through you. So there is some um, some really heavy cautions in terms of working with this kind of energy that you need to make sure that you're in touch with it, that you can find some comfort with it. You may even need ground crew 
you know, to have somebody there to help you if you feel like you're getting lost in it. And we've often talked here about balance, not just being the uh, having a little of both to counterweight each other, but rather existing in both play in both sides of this thing at the same time and being able to sort of maintain that balance structure versus counterweight. It's 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 sort of a different mentality. And we've talked about that, Kelly, you've mentioned that quite a few times about that, that perspective on balance. Well, it's, yeah. it's thesis, antithesis, and synthesis, right? The thesis and the antithesis are the polar opposites that create the continuum. The synthesis is the coming together and rising above. So when you do work with Kali, you are going into the depths of your darkness, and sometimes into the depths of the darkness of the world, right? Because within your darkness is the darkness of the world and, and vice versa. And so uh, oftentimes, especially for women, but for, um, but for the men who listen to this podcast too, probably, <laughs> um, the living in that darkness is the rage, right? And, and the rage is in our families of origin was unacceptable and therefore denied. And when your rage is denied, it gets plowed under and it can either get turned against you and become depression or it gets plowed into, you know, a, a, an underground artesian well that ultimately explodes from time to time all over everyone and sometimes explodes your life. You know, we've talked about clearing out the well of rage. Uh, we did that when we talked with Hannah. But um, the work of really owning your rage, right? Really owning your power. And I do equate those because in the beginning, not ultimately, but in the beginning, when you step into your power, it is often the destructive side of your power that you step into. And that is, is a Kali energy and it is a rage based energy. Okay. And, and there's a difference between, uh, righteous anger, which comes out of, out of victimhood, right. And rage of destruction, which is so Kali is, is listed as being, you know, she's a goddess who uh, overpowers evil, who destroys the destroyer of evil, right? Um, evil, though, is a good or bad definition, right? And if you, de if you define something as evil, then it is a victim space that you're coming from. Right. Because you've you've gone into good and evil. Right. And evil is something that's bad and I must destroy it sort of thing. Um, if you look at this more as an alchemical process and you see it as good and evil in the terms of what is good for me and what is bad for me. Right. What what supports me and what destroys me, you know, what tears me down. Right. Then the destroyer of evil becomes a very different thing. Right. And now you've stepped into a transformational process because now what you're doing is you're seeking out the things that tear you down and dismantling them. Right. And from that perspective, that makes sense. Right. So you have to come at it from the alchemical perspective where it's the rage of, of, of destruction of I will not be held back. I will not. Uh, I will no longer beat myself up. I will no longer uh, propagate forward the stories of my childhood that I integrated into my beingness. I will not stand in this space. Of, I, got, of I got one for you. Yeah. I will not lop off pieces of myself to fit in this box. Oh, yes. Right. And it's interesting. We talk about good and evil and, and how that in the in the human experience, Good and evil is largely perspective more than anything else. It's, it's, it's our perspective based on. Okay. So how can we, those listening to the podcast, men, women, 
children in some cases. How can we directly work with Kali? And is it safe to, if we're in different stages, you know, in, in terms of a life cycle perspective of our journey, are there times where we should and times where we should not engage with Kali? It is never safe to work with Kali. That is a wonderful open because <laughs> no, because that, that sounds like Kelly just saying, don't do it, but you're not, you're simply not. saying it's not safe. Not that it's good or evil. <laughs> here. It's, just not safe. it's just not safe. Just know that right. going in. <laughs> right. Yes. It is never safe. Um, it is sometimes wise and it is sometimes unwise, but it is never safe. If you are still feeling unsafe on a day-to-day basis in your life, you should absolutely not work with Kali. As I said, this is an advanced discussion, right? So uh, if you're going to work with Kali, you need to be feeling safe in your day-to-day life. And you need to, to be able to be the steward and the, the creator of your own safety, Right. Because walking into the experience with her, you're all bets are off. Okay. All bets are off. And and the rug will be pulled out from underneath you on multiple occasions, usually at the top of a cliff. Okay. So, you know, I'm not kidding when I say buckle up. Okay. It is, it is never a fun experience. It is never a cool experience. It is usually a terrifying and tumultuous and overwhelming experience that you learn a freak ton from by the time you're done. I want to okay. point out that that feeling of safety that Kelly was talking about has to come from inside. Yeah. Because if you have placed your safety in the external, in your home, your job, your relationships, okay, those are all things that working with Kali can rip away. So the it's not only that you need to feel safe, but that that sense of safety has to be from the internal, which is I'm stepping into this in an, in a knowing way. And with the understanding that as these things are, you know, as things are destroyed and torn away and whatever else might happen, because I'm ready for that at this place in my life, that I can find and keep my center and evolve through this process to what comes next. Now, you brought up earlier the well of rage and draining the well of rage, and we've talked about that a number of times in Spirit Sherpa. Is it better to have drained your well of rage before getting into working with Kali, or is that part of something that can actually help you to drain that well in the work that you do with her? Um, I think that it is not required to have done that work before you start with Kali because she will give you direction for it. Right. Um, In fact, I have often recommended to people who have not managed to even tap their well to to work with Kali because she'll freaking help you find it. (laughs) You know, Uh, but you do need to be standing solidly on your own two feet and have a a trust in your own ability to adapt and the ability to self-support and and, you know, have your courage muscles firmly built and all the stuff that we do in the Inner Peace 101 program, right, that we've talked about a lot. But, you know, you do have to have all of that done before you step into working with Kali, because if you don't, it will not be a good experience. It will probably break you. So let's be clear, this is not something to be trifled with. This is much like we did the, the, the early, early part of the podcast was all about don't do this and don't do that. Don't blow yourself up. This is an intermediate level. Don't blow yourself up. Don't, don't let her blow you up. <laughs> don't let her destroy you by, by engaging too soon, right? And that's going to be true for any of the dark goddesses, whether you're dealing with Kali or Hecate or the Morgan, so on, right? Um, you don't want to engage these goddesses if you're not ready and and don't don't make it a point of pride to puff yourself and go well i'm ready you know you will you will regret that you they will chew you up and spit you out and say ha lunch (laughs) they they have no no respect for false puffery kind of stuff it's like nope they'll make it hurt bad because you puffed yeah so this is a be really honest with yourself and, you know, then, and don't go around saying, oh, I did this when you didn't, because they will come and get you for that too. 
they don't appreciate that. I did. So I, I'm sure that I've told this story before, but it's been a long time that um, I was at the Renaissance Fair in Massachusetts years ago, 20 years ago now. And the crew that, that did the main stage production decided that it would be fun to do a production of Hello, Dolly, but to do it as Hello, Kali. And I'm like, they're singing hello Kali on the stage and they come out and they start singing it. And I literally got up out of my seat and ran from the stage, looking up at the sky and going, I didn't know I wasn't part of this. I have nothing to do with this. This is disrespectful and I'm not part of it. I'm out. (laughs) Every single one of them, the entire crew lost their jobs that year. And it wasn't, you know, directly saying, oh, well, you did this. No, it was, they just, they, they, fi- they got fired because they mocked Kali. Not, not the, that wasn't the reason that was given, but Kali made sure they got fired and they didn't get hired again anywhere. <laughs> you know, it was just, and, and I talked to some of them and their, their lives were not good in the following year. You know, you do not do something that mocks the goddess, and, and expect that there will be nothing, the goddess of destruction. <laughs> and you don't do anything that mocks any goddess, but the goddess of destruction, seriously, are, you must have a death wish. That's all I can say, right? You do not do anything that mocks the goddess of destruction and, and expect that you're going to come out, you know, unscathed or even, you know, not chomped in half. Um, and, and this is why I'm saying don't don't go out and puff and say, oh, I did this when you didn't, because they will come and get you for that, too. And I wish to point out that this is a very active, energetic goddess mm-hmm. because she is actively worshipped by millions of people. So it's not like, you know, some long forgotten God off in a corner that nobody's putting any energy into in a while. And, you know, they've still got some juice, but oh, no, no, she's got big, big juju. Yeah. Yeah. I, I told you the story about the uh, the elders who had summoned Satan just to, to fuck with him. i tell you that story. Yeah, I remember. That was a long time ago. I think it was the Christianity and demons story or something out of the episode. But um but hubris the word is hubris yes well but they did it successfully because it was a bunch of them and they were badasses but um i would not have done it and i can tell you that not one of them would have considered summoning kali that would never have been a consideration so let me just say that i am certain that they would not have done that with kali that's how big of a difference we're talking. And this is, you know, Satan who has a whole lot of energy behind him too, right? He's not long forgotten either. Exactly. Right. <laughs> right. So there is there is fear behind him, but not not the same level of fear and respect and worship. He's There's not a few worshiped. weirdos. There's a few word weirdos out there, but but millions of people do not worship Satan. They're afraid of him. They believe he's real, but he does not garner energy. From That's millions of followers, exactly the way Billions Kali does. Even. Yeah, for for Hindus, yeah, indeed. <laughs> Not an energy to be messed with, and you know, a lot of these goddesses come from earlier traditions, right? So you know, they come down through you know from Sumeria or you know earlier Mesopotamia, things like that, and you know, one of the images that is. Uh, listed at least in her Wikipedia listing was uh, that she's depicted on a lion. Now I've never seen an image of her depicted of, of riding a lion, but um, they they say that there is some, so okay. maybe. Um, but the goddess known for riding a lion is Babylon, right? And so you know she's badass too, right? <laughs> so, so you know these the, the thing you have to recognize is that they they evolve much like all women we evolve right and and we are ever changing and ever evolving and so you know the thousand faces of kali is probably one of the most rich and representative examples of womanhood in goddessdom in today's world and you know we're talking about one very small sliver of a rich and varied 
personality of the goddess Kali. And the reason that I'm, that we're talking about her from this perspective, from a Westerner's view, is because there is nothing else that we have available to us that holds this energy in, in the mythological world today. If you remember, and most people don't, and it always amuses me because the, the dark feminine just gets completely erased from people's memories. But in the, I believe it's the Fellowship of the Ring. Uh, no, the, wherever they bring the ring back to Galadriel. I don't remember which one that is, but they bring the ring to Galadriel in, in Rivendell. And uh, Frodo hands it to her and she flares up into this wild cre- dark creature and she she says all of these things that will happen and she says all oh, will love and fear me right that is the dark goddess energy that we're talking about here right and that that was a glimpse into this aspect of kali that we're representing here okay so um it, you know, all you got to do is look up Galadriel and, and the ring and on YouTube and you'll find it. But, you know, most people don't remember the scene at all. I, I reference it all the time and they're like, what? I know those movies. No, I don't remember that scene. I'm like, <laughs> dark goddess scares you. You erase it from your memory. <laughs> That's how it's going. So this is the sort of thing. Okay. So if you are in a place where you are standing on a precipice, where you are, I mean, if you're in your Saturn return, (laughs) if you're 28 or 56, those are your Saturn returns. um, You know, this might be a good time to work with Kali if you have done the foundational work, right? If you are in a place where you're like, you know, I'm just dissatisfied with what is happening in my life. I'm ready to make a change. I'm ready to look at the hard stuff. I'm ready to make that next evolutionary step and I'm willing to accept whatever the consequences are, right? That's the key. You have to be, it's an initiation, right? And we talked about this in in the initiation episode last year is it is a, a journey from which you will not return. You go through the door and you never come back. You become someone new. And so... You have to be willing to be with that in order to go on this type of journey. And to let go of everything. And people go, well, what about my spouse? I've seen spouses disappear in this process. You know, marriages fall apart. Well, you know, what about this? What about that? It's kind of like if you're trying to make a list of what you want to keep, don't do the work because you aren't ready. There is no lawyering the process. It is an all or nothing process. Right. And it's not to say that, that these, these things will absolutely leave your, your life. It's simply to say that they may. And if you're not willing to have that happen, then just don't go through that door. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Well, this has been terrifying. Thanks so much for this. <laughs> this is just wonderful. <laughs> Nightmares and, um, Fear of saying and, and singing songs in a mocking way. That's uh, that's per- Oh, by the way, Kelly, did the woman ever get the mask off the wall? She did. Oh, good. But she didn't make the final payment. A did she stand on in. somebody and rip their head off and make them pay no. for her? <laughs> no, but a, a good friend of hers came in as, as a gift to her and I paid see. off the, the last of it and took it to her. Okay. Yeah. Well, good. Although at least we have a, a a happy ending to this this tale of um, death and destruction that we've that we've we- weaved woven today. I suppose woven. All right. Wow. Um, do you guys have anything else you want to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> Well, so I'm going to take sort of a left turn, um, please, but it's not please. much of a left turn. <laughs> take a nice <laughs> left turn here. Something far <laughs> less scary, if you wouldn't mind. But it's not much of a left turn because, you know, when you run a business, which is going to sound really strange in, in this context, but uh, trust me, they'll go with it. It'll It'll be okay. It is very much like its own initiatory process. And if you've run a business, you know, there is 
one initiation after another, and you are you are often rolling downhill without you know any safety net. <laughs> but um, for people who are magical, okay, um, and empathic, and and connected, business is even more intense, right? And it, you know it can it can feel overwhelming. And a lot of the issues that we deal with are often, uh, they often come up as part of this, the process of running your business. And so, you know, if you are a business owner and you're listening to this and this, this sort of work is going, Oh, I kind of like it. I kind of don't know. I kind of like it. I don't you know. Um, you know, I, I do want to say that, that we do offer the, you know, it, I've, I've been calling it the energetics of business, but I'm, I'm renaming it the, the empath entrepreneur because it's much more representative. Um, but the, the empath entrepreneur program that Kathy and I both coach um, is very much an initiatory process. Um, and you don't have to work with Colleen to do it, right? <laughs> but we do, we, we affectionately refer to the program as two shamans now hiding because that's what happens is that we, we get right down to the core of it and there is no hiding. There's no like running away from the issue. If you are ready to, to make it a change and to figure out why your revenue hasn't opened up the way you want it to, or why things just aren't working in the way that you want, or why you're exhausted, even though you're making a ton of money, you have no energy to use to, to do anything with it at the end of the day, because you're toast. Um, you know, if, if these things are the things that bother you, then, you know, give me a shout, you know, click onto the uh, empath entrepreneur on the website. It's in the online program section at kellysparta.com and, and, you know, fill out the, the free business energy audit and, uh, and, you know, we'll chat about it, but yeah, the, uh, this work ultimately is about initiation, whether you do it in your business, whether you do it in your personal life, it is all about the initiatory processes. It's all about evolving yourself. It's all about letting go of the things that hold you back. It's all about being with what is and learning to love yourself in spite of it, right? Or actually because of it, ultimately, right? So this is what they refer to as the great work, right? With that, I think I'll do my Kellyism. I was going to say, did you just well do an unprompted time? Kellyism there? I or? think I did. <laughs> I think I did, you know? So, um, you know, without any risk, there is no reward. And without courage uh, or without fear, there can be no courage, right? So take the risk, get the reward, be courageous in the face of your fear and step into the person that you know you can be. Excellent. Thank you so much. And I won't point out the fact that Kelly and Kali are real closely sounding there. So people who, Kathy who, and Kathy. Kathy and yeah. Kelly, there's a lot of hard cases. Uh, just, just saying, you know, there's, yeah. there's work, be, be courageous and, and work with, with these two. That's, that's, I think the message here. Anyway, <laughs> that is. Because if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. Word. <laughs> Double Kellyisms and a Kathyism all in one day. This is the extra long episode with extra bonus material, apparently. Ooh, baby. But that is all that we have for this week, unfortunately. Be sure to join us next time as Kelly adds another chapter into your guide to energy, magic, and the spirit world. I am Joey C. here with Kelly Sparta and Kathy Shiren, and you have been listening to Spirit Sherpa. So long, everyone. Bye. Bye bye. Condition. Each mile I travel over 13,000 now. Spirit Tripper is the sole property of Kelly Sparta Enterprises and is distributed under a Creative Commons BY NC ND 4.0 license. For more information about this licensing, please go to www.creativecommons.org. Any requests for deviations to this licensing should be sent to kelly at kellysparta.com.
To sign up for or get more information on the programs, offerings, and services referenced in this episode, please go to www.kellysparta.com. This episode of Spirit Sherpa has been produced by Honu Voice Productions with post-production by Christopher Wright. Into my home.